The Story of the Paradise Files. My name is Jenny. I am the director of the Paradise Files. I'm a white woman, 58 years old. I have browny, greyish, sort of messy, sort of bob thing going on with my hair. Red sunglasses because I have a red stripy stripe shirt on and a blue zip up sports jacket. And I have, of course, my signature curly, really, really silver necklace. I have a hearing aid in my left ear and I walk my hands around in the name of sign language. Poetry Spires is about many, many things. It's about a mother and a daughter and their relationship, their dysfunctional relationship, and how they resolve it by then. It's about it's Teresa, it's her story, The Blind Enchantress. My name's Selina Mills, I'm the co-librettist. I'm five foot nine, dark hair, few grey hairs. I wear a hat, a black sort of fedora hat um, that helps my eyes actually. Um, and I'm currently wearing black trousers and a black top and a very warm, uh, big purple scarf that I've wrapped three times around my neck. About 10 years ago, I was researching a book on the history of blind women, and I couldn't believe it was just either Helen Keller or blind nuns. I started researching and my sister started helping me and we came across this two lines in a dictionary, musical dictionary saying Maria Theresa von Paradis and like how come we'd never heard of her and she was very popular, she had incredible press around her so she knew Mozart very well and Haydn and Salieri, all the people in the 18th century that most people have heard of and yet we don't know her and then we start delving into her archives and found there were lots of medical notes about her and we were like how, how did that become the story and not her talent? Hi, my name is Nicola Veronowska. I'm the librettist for The Paradise Files. I'm a white woman with dark hair that's tied up and I'm wearing a black dress with pink flowers on it. The story of a blind woman who, despite the limitations of her time, was extremely successful in her own life, was very talented, but has been forgotten. For me personally, as a neurodivergent woman, so I have, I have dyspraxia and I identify with ADHD and ASD, it was just wonderful to discover this story of the woman who had faced so many barriers and had overcome them. And I could relate to that in terms of my own life. My name is Erin Mullen and I'm the composer of Paradise Files. Uh, I'm black, I have very fluffy sticky out hair and I'm wearing my bright yellow glasses today. I'm wearing a dress that's blue and white and um, I have a big orange ring. <laughs> I'm always dubious about writing um, theatre subjects on, certainly as a composer writing about an, another uh, musician because I always feel they've got their own music to bring. But, um, particularly with Nikki, we found a way in that was very intriguing to us both about exploring the relationship between, you know, a gifted child and their parents. Um, looking back to the 18th century through, you know, 21st century sensibilities, it's impossible to completely get there. And I kept thinking about myself at that time, that it's quite likely I would have been a, I don't know, a slave in, in the States somewhere. So I knew that I, I thought about my own journey as a, as, as a woman, as a black woman, living in Western society, but also thinking about... Um, what it, what it would have been like for Theresia on every level, woman with a disability, but also with great uh, musical gifts, and what that impact that would have had on the people around her. And, and Nikki and I had this great meeting where we, 
you know, I was, I was trying to explain what it's like growing up in a household where you, your music is taken to another world and away from, the, you know, your family. And I found that very interesting. So, so in some ways we used, I used my own life story a little bit. I'm Andrea Brown. I'm the musical director and conductor. I am a white uh, woman um, and I'm currently wearing a dark blue top and, uh, and some glasses. Not often uh, do I get the opportunity to be right at the start of the planning, indeed the story making, right at the start of the composition and working with a composer um, to really craft this this narrative um, finding the singers as well casting the singers casting the the, the players as well we, we we're joined by the bbc concert orchestra so we wanted to make sure we were um uh, very diverse and representative um i hope of of what we would think maybe a gray eye production might look like <laughs> I'm Jelena Makarova, I'm the pianist. I will be working with BBC Concert Orchestra. I'm wearing purple jumper, uh, I've got brownish, longish hair. It is not a usual setup. And so it's very interesting to see uh, from the very, very start of rehearsals, um, such measures being used as sign language. Uh, so that was very fascinating for me. I'm Bethan Langford, I'm a mezzo-soprano and I'm playing Theresia from Paradis in The Paradis Files. I'm very tall and I've got a bob length haircut just above my shoulders and a very neat fringe that I'm very proud of. I met Erilyn a few years ago and after my audition, after the workshops, um, she said, oh, I'm going to write this role for you, which as an opera singer is, is quite rare really to have, your, to have the part written for you. So that was very amazing. And she um, is a complex, interesting person, but she also has a disability and we talk about it openly was something that really attracted me and something that I think is really important, especially in opera at the moment. Hello, my name is Maureen Brathwaite. I'm a soprano. I'm singing The Baroness. I am Black British via Caribbean. I wear orange a lot recently and yellow and a cross. She has great issues with Teresa. She obviously is angry. She is envious. And uh, so it's a great role to discover. Diversity, I think, is something that I've been striving for before it became a thing being outside of the expected sort of background for opera singing. I've always done things which are slightly off the direct path of opera. My name is Ella Taylor, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm playing Gerda, the maid and gossip one. I'm a young-ish person, late twenties. I'm white, I have short brown hair and I'm wearing a black jumper that has a funky bear dancing on it. She's kind of like an all-knowing maid and she's quite, um, she's quite mischievous um, but also essentially I think I think she really really cares about Theresia and she's she's really not impressed with Theresia's parents and sort of how she's been treated and she's just trying to make things right but I think is also very world weary. My name's Omar Ibrahim uh, and I'm singing uh, one of the gossips, uh, The Baron 
and a doctor. I'm mixed race. Um, at the moment, I've got a, a beard, a grey beard, and uh, I'm balding, if not bald. I'm one of four people uh, who comment on the action. And then these situations uh, are summoned up of uh, trying to find a cure for Theresia's blindness, for different areas of uh, her performing life. And so, and so we glide over them, but it's all very much uh, ensemble, so not inhabited. Hi, I'm Max. I'm one of the performance interpreters for this production. I am a white non-binary person. I'm sitting in my black power wheelchair. I've got blue hair, which is a kind of tin length bob on one side and short on the other. I've got a black beard. I'm wearing makeup. I'm wearing a black, loose fitting cardigan. Um, and I have a trans symbol earring. And my pronouns are they, them. Opera is such a specific thing to translate. There's so many layers to it. It's not just the libretto that's on the page that we're translating into BSL. It's also the emotion from the singers and there's the music behind it, sometimes has a different emotion to what the singers are adding, so there are little bits of that that we need to pepper in and generally do a more poetic translation, I would say, than if it were, say, just spoken lines. I'm Andy Louise Hippolyte. I play the role of Dr Jan, as well as one of the gossips. I am a large black woman with um, black longish braids, um, there are lots of them. Um, I'm wearing a black, grey and um, maroon checked top and black trousers. I play one of the gossips. Um, we, there are four of us and we form what I guess you could call a, like a Greek chorus. Um, we comment on events, react to events um, and sometimes we have sort of um, flashbacks um, where we perform memories uh, and we become the characters within those memories. My name is Ben Tapper. Um, I am playing the roles of Salieri and Dr. Anton, and I'm the tenor gossip. Today, I'm wearing a very cheerful jumper. It's got a velvet pink dragon on. I have um, a beard and I've got um, very short hair. The um, two roles I play um, are Salieri, who is the music teacher, who is a very, very bad and untrustworthy man. And then as one of the doctors, Dr. Anton, there is a clamour to cure her of her blindness and I think basically everyone has a go. You know, I wrote the music for it and I did my very best, but the, all the other layers, all, all the team, all the people behind the scenes were, were crucially important and it felt like a show where all the people on stage loved being there but all the people behind, you know, the, the designer, all, all, all the costume makers, they were crucial, a crucial part of it. My name is Bernadette Roberts, I'm the set and costume designer and today I'm wearing a turquoise dress with a pink necklace. I've got long brown dark hair with some blonde bits in it and I've got brown skin. It was important to capture the essence of the 18th century but the um, challenge I would say about doing a touring show is it had to be simple. So there's two main areas of design. So there's a piano, and I wanted it to be quite a sort of magical a musical instrument that Teresa could play. So rather than there being keys, I've actually got a light box where the keys are. And then the other part of the design is made up of three frames. They're gold, they're quite ornate, and they actually all have light boxes inside them as well. The 18th century in terms of costume is very flamboyant and slightly crazy um, and I wanted to make sure I captured that in terms of elements but I also wanted to set the opera using modern day clothes with those touches. 
So here is my beautiful sapphire gown, and I have a matching cape. Both of them are embossed with hand-embroidered flowers, and I have these red cuffs with long bows on them. And when I put this costume on, I become Theresia von Paradis, the blind enchantress. For this production to have accessibility at the heart of it, through its casting, through its storytelling, through its very innovative way of presenting um, audio material in order to describe something, um, I really think it's been such an exciting journey and a huge honour to be at the helm of this. Um, I've been working for, for a little while, but this is the first production I've been a part of and um, yeah, it, it very much feels like home and it's a very welcoming environment to, to be in. The project itself is really interesting and a very important story to tell. Most of the time when I go to an opera, I have often felt that I was watching something. With this production, I feel like an audience member can be a part of something. To see, not just to see the opera, but to see Grey Eye, um, to see how much can be done in theatre to make it so inclusive, um, I think that's definitely worth people seeing. I'm not sure people know that that is possible and, and it's happening. I mean, our opera is accessible. We have subtitles, it's got styling, so I can feel it, I can see it, and from that I feel like I can hear it through my skin. And so that's what's exciting. Please continue to help support the work we do cultivating and championing the careers of deaf, disabled and neurodivergent artists across the UK and internationally. Visit justgiving.com forward slash greyeye to donate. Cast and creatives. Singers. Maureen Brathwaite as Hilda. The Baroness von Paradis, Omar Ebrahim as Joseph, the Baron von Paradis, a doctor and baritone gossip, Andy Louise Hippolyte as a doctor, auto gossip, Bethan Langford as Maria Theresia von Paradis, Ella Taylor as Gerda, the maid and soprano gossip, Ben Thappa as Salieri, a doctor and tenor gossip, performance interpreters. Chandrika Gopalakrishnan and Max Markovic. Musicians Yelena Makarova on piano, Michael Gray on violin, leader, James Good on double bass, Milos Milivojevic on accordion, James Gambold on percussion. Additional musicians Charles Mutter on violin, leader, Dominic Worsley on double bass. Zika Nikolic on accordion. Creative team Erilyn Wallen, CBE, composer. Andrea Brown, musical director and conductor. Jenny Seely, OBE, director. Nicola Weronoska, librettist. Selena Mills, co librettist and original idea. Bernadette Roberts, designer. Emma Chapman, lighting designer. Ben Glover, video designer. Sunny Nwachuku, movement director. Sarah Playfair, casting director. Bill Banks Jones, dramaturg. Daryl Jackson, British Sign Language consultant. Raji Gopalakrishnan and Zara Jane, deafblind audience development project consultants. Bethan Langford and Selena Mills, audio description advisors. Production team. Simon Sturges, Production Manager. Paul Sortel, Company Stage Manager. Gemma Scott, Deputy Stage Manager. Stuart Glover, Technical Stage Manager. Hetty Shand, Senior Producer. Lizzie Luxford, General Manager. Robin Bowyer, Trainee Producer. Charlotte McCabe, Digital Content Manager. Bill Chandler, Director, BBC Concert Orchestra. Carolyn Hendry, Concert and Planning Manager. BBC Concert Orchestra, Claire Tapping, Orchestra Personnel Manager, BBC Concert Orchestra.
Alice Gatherer, Team Assistant, BBC Concert Orchestra, David Burns, PR Consultant, Chloe Nelkin and Emma Ferrier, Marketing Consultants, Henry T, Rehearsal Photography, Patrick Baldwin, Production Photography, Ovin Armley, Film Production, DP and Editor, Suki Mock, Editor, Matt Marin, Camera Operator, Ed Grant, Camera Operator, Wayne Urquhart, Audio Recordist and Mixer, Jerry O'Riordan, Audio Recordist on Workshop, Stephanie Greenslade, Costume Supervisor, Aoife Baron Flynn, Access Support Worker and Deafblind Textile Artist. With thanks to Andy Massey, Alex Hume, Lawrence Wallington and Caroline Richardson, Kate Baden, Brian Benson, Rebecca Buckle, Mark Davies, Colin Falconer, Mary Rose, Fox Ness, Marissa Frampton, Natalie Raybould, Cassia Scott, Claire Shovelton, Kathy Tate, Dominic Phil, Anna Gregg, Vicky G. Dare, Bill G. and all the team at Tete a Tete, and everyone who has helped make this happen over the last four years. And a huge thank you to all the staff at Grey Eye, Curve Theatre, Southbank Centre, The Stables Milton Keynes, Mercury Theatre, Hull Truck Theatre, Perth Theatre, Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama and Crucible Sheffield. Supported using public funding by Arts Council England, Garfield Western Foundation, Vision Foundation, Milton Keynes Community Foundation, Cochrane Foundation, and UNESCO Club.